Hello everyone, this is Dr. E and for today ay pag-uusapan naman natin yung mga mathematical system na kinagamit natin sa pagsagot ng mga problems in geometry. Ano-ano nga ba yung mga mathematical systems at bakit kailangan natin itong uh, maintindihan para mas lubos natin maunawaan yung mga languages at yung mga terminologies na ginagamit natin sa pagsagot at pag-aaral ng mga topics involving geometry. So, syempre, unahin natin kung ano nga ba ang geometry at bakit natin to kinagamit sa mathematics. So, the word geometry comes from the Greek language and it means to measure the earth. So, yan ang formal definition ng geometry at ito yung gagamitin natin sa pagtalakay ng mga mathematical system or way on how we reason out in mathematics. So, we need to learn how to use reason and logic in order to recognize patterns, make conjectures, and develop the laws of this system. So, yung mga words na medyo foreign sa inyong pandinig, tulad ng conjectures, ng uh, postulates, nasa mga lessons natin yan from our previous topics. So, uh, mas mauunawaan natin yung paggamit niyan dito sa ating lesson for today. So, paano nga ba natin ginagamit yung logic and uh, how to recognize patterns para makapagsagot tayo ng mathematical problems tulad nito. So, nakikita ninyo, meron tayong uh, geometric patterns at ang gagawin lang natin is to predict kung ano yung magiging next figure base sa pattern na meron tayo dito sa screen natin. So, mapapansin natin na kung uh, kukompletuhin natin or i-drawing natin yung susunod na pattern dito, makikita nyo using logical thinking at using malinis <laughs> malinis na board. So, yung umpisa natin, mapapansin nyo isang quadrilateral na merong Triangle sa corner na to, sumunod naman ay square na meron naman ditong triangle. At sumunod naman ay dito sa square na ito na merong triangle dito sa corner na ito. So napapansin nyo na vertical ko ginagawa or ina-arrange yung aking mga squares dahil mas maganda or mas malaki yung space ko vertically kumpara dun sa nakikita ninyo sa ating screen right now. Pero kung hahanapin natin kung ano ang susunod nating pattern, mapapansin nyo na yung ating pattern ay nag-move with this particular manner. So, ito yung magiging itsura nung next pattern natin gamit yung ating logical reasoning. At tingnan natin kung tama nga yung pattern natin. So, tama yung pattern na naisip natin at ito yung mga pamamaraan ng pag-iisip na ginamit natin. There's no mathematical procedure, there's no formula, but all we did was we looked at the pattern and using logical thinking, we're able to produce the next pattern in this figure using logical thinking. At hindi lang patterns or geometric figures ang pwede natin gamitan sa problem na ito or the way ng pag-iisip na ito, meron din tayong mga numerical sequence na pwede nating uh, makompleto gamit ang ating logical reasoning. So, ano ang uh, magiging number right after 250 mula sa sequence na to? So, kailangan nating hanapin yung pattern na kung sa tingin ninyo ay nakakabuo ng ating mga series of numbers from 2 going to 10, 10 going to 50, and 50 going to 250. And using logical thinking, we'll be able to figure out na mapapansin natin na parang nagmumultiply lang tayo ng constant. At yung constant na yun, 2 and 10, ano kaya ang number na pwede natin multiply kay 2 na magiging 10? Which is 5. So, pwede natin gamitin si 5 at 10 yung naging sagot dito. So, hindi pa natin alam kung parehas-parehas or pare-parehas yung pattern na yan sa 10, 50, and 250. So, subukan natin from 10 to 50, pag minultiply natin si 10 ng 5, we know that it's also 50. So, papansin nyo na sa pattern na ito, kailangan lang natin i-multiply yung ating sequence by 5 to be able to get the number next to the sequence. So, from 2 
50 or from 50 to 250, let's multiply it by 5. At we know that 5 times 50 is 250. At para makuha natin yung number next to 250, we will multiply it by 5 at makukuha natin si 12 or 1,250. So, yung pamamaraan ng pag-iisip na ginagamit natin para makuha natin yung ating uh, pattern ay ang tinatawag nating inductive reasoning or using patterns to be able to come up with a conclusion. At yung conclusion natin na sa inductive reasoning, yan yung tinatawag nating conjecture. So, yan yung using logic to recognize pattern na pwede natin gamitin sa pag-aaral natin ng geometry. Now, Meron tayong tinatawag sa geometry na axiomatic system or postulate system. Too big of a word, by definition, ito ay yung system or it is a system made up of undefined terms, defined terms, axioms and postulates, and theorems which are used in proving logical conclusions in geometry. So, itong mga terms na ito, it may be too foreign dahil nga sabi ko sa inyo, ang pag-aaral ng mathematics like learning a foreign language, we really need to understand yung mga meaning behind dito sa mga words na ito para mas maunawaan natin yung kanyang uh, ibig sabihin pag nabasa natin ito or narinig sa ating mga geometry lesson. So gamitin natin yung mga examples o gamitan natin ng examples yung uh, mga words na nabanggit natin sa ating axiomatic system which we can also call as mathematical system. So yung una natin is yung mga undefined terms, and by definition, undefined terms, most basic terms that we do not formally define but have meaning that we agreed upon. So yan yung ibig sabihin ng mga undefined terms sa mathematics or sa mathematical system. At ang example nito ay let's say yung mga words or terms like point line, and plane, yan yung mga examples ng mga undefined terms na kahit hindi natin bigyan ng definition, alam natin at na-visualize natin kung ano ba yung point, ano ba yung line, at ano ba yung plane from our personal experience sa ating mga nakikita around us. Now, ang susunod natin ay defined terms, and by definition, defined terms, we use undefined terms or already defined terms to formally define them. So ngayon, from undefined terms to be able to produce defined terms, maglalagay tayo ngayon ng specific description na magtutugma doon sa ating mga words na yan according sa ating discipline, which is geometry. So a line, we can basically define line in so many ways, but in Geometry, specifically, line is made of a set of points which is extended in opposite directions infinitely. So kung i-visualize natin yung definition na yan, sabi daw, infinite or set of points which is extended in opposite directions. So ito yung ating mga infinitely many points extended in both direction, either to the left or to the right. So pwede natin gawin tong arrow at ang common itsura ng line natin ay parang ganyan. So yan ngayon yung ating line formally defined by geometry. So ito ngayon yung mga defined terms natin. Ang susunod natin sa mathematical system ay yung tinatawag nating axiom. Ano nga ba yung mga axiom na yan? So by definition, an approved but agreed upon assumption which applies to math in general. So pagka nakarinig kayo ng axioms, just remember na yung uh, mga statements na yan or yung mga words na makikita ninyo ay associated sa mathematics in general. So ano bang example ng mga axioms natin? Tulad nitong uh, axiom natin na if equals are added to equals, then the sum are equals, example nyan, or, or the sums are equal tulad nitong x is equal to 20 and y is equal to 30 since na-define natin na si x ay 20 at si y ay 30. So ang sum niya, pag in natin si x plus y, even though it's looking too abstract, but since meron siyang defined value, alam natin ng x plus y is equal to 30 in mathematics. So yan yung ating tinatawag na axioms. At kung meron kayo mga examples na axioms, comment it down below and let's see kung makakapagbigay kayo ng mga axioms which is basically statements 
unproved statement, particularly sa mathematics. Now, ano naman yung tinatawag natin postulate? Yung postulate natin, it's similar to axioms, but the difference is that yung postulate, specific siya sa geometry. So, kung mapapansin niyo, maririnig niyo lagi, bakit may sinasabing postulates, may theorems, may properties, but when you specifically hear the word postulates, it is an approve, unapproved but agreed upon assumption which applies to a specific discipline such as geometry. So yan yung tinatawag natin postulates at example ng postulate natin sa geometry. Exactly one line can be drawn between two points. At ito yung ating visualization nitong uh, postulate na yan. Meron tayong point A and point B. At kapag kinonect natin yung dots na yan, meron tayong mabubuong line. And yan yung ating postulate which is an agreed upon assumption. So ang assumption dyan na agreed upon ay kung meron daw tayong dalawang points, one, and if we connect these two points, meron tayong line. So, yan yung postulate natin about line na pasa meron tayong dalawang points, makakabuo tayo ng isang line. And the next mathematical system na ginagamit natin is yung tinatawag natin theorem. At yung theorem naman, mas malalim kesa sa postulates dahil ito ay mga group of statements or... Uh, Proved statements or facts galing sa ating mga discipline or geometry uh, principles at yun yung tinatawag nating theorem. So by definition, a statement which has been proved on the basis of other theorems, postulates, and or axioms, yan yung tinatawag nating theorem. At kadalasan, gumagamit tayo ng deductive reasoning para makabuo tayo ng mga theorems. So ang example ng ating theorem sa geometry, Triangle ABC is a right triangle, then A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. At mapapansin ninyo na meron tayong uh, notation ng uh, triangle. And at the same time, meron tayong formula na ginagamit. At alam natin na yung formula na yan ay tinatawag natin Pythagorean Theorem. At yan yung example natin ng mga theorem na ginagamit sa geometry or perhaps mathematics in general. So, yan yung ating tinatawag na mathematical system. It's just how we name or put um, words according doon sa mga descriptions na nakikita natin sa mga mathematical problems na sinasagutan natin. So, don't get too intimidated with these big words dahil... Uh, Tulad nga na lagi kong sinasabi, basta alam natin yung meaning na yan, mas maiintindihan natin at mauunawaan yung language of mathematics. Now, let's say meron tayong mga figures na ibibigay and using our mathematical system and logical thinking and reasoning, we'll be able to answer problems similar to this one na it doesn't involve any mathematical computation or mathematical procedures, but by using uh, logical reasoning, we'll be able to answer this question. So, ano nga ba yung question natin dito? Meron tayong nakikita ang angle measure. So, sabi dito, these angles are complementary or yung sum nila ay 90 degrees. Ano ba yung ating mga angles na nakita dito? So, kahit hindi siya defined, meron tayong angle dito na to, itong... Uh, um, opening na ito, isa tong angle, isang angle din to. Now, ang tanong, ang nakikita nyo ba ay example ng complementary angle? At ang sagot natin dito ay no. Now, why is it no? Kahit mukha namang 90 degrees yung ating angle, bakit hindi natin ito pwedeng sabihin complementary angle? Because in mathematics, it's an exact science. And right now, we are not really certain if we are seeing a 90 degree angle mula dun sa dalawang measurements or angle measurements na nakikita natin. Pero kung lalagyan natin to ng basic symbol or notation like this one, this is an agreed upon symbol na ginagamit natin sa lahat ng 90 degree angle in mathematics. So alam natin na itong angle na ito ay 90 degrees at kung hahatiin natin siya sa dalawa, it will equal to 90 kapag inad natin sila. So between these two figures, this one, we cannot really say if this is a complementary angle, but for the second figure, we know that this is a complementary angle because 
we are seeing an agreed upon symbol of a 90 degree angle dito sa figure na ito. So yan yung tinatawag natin paggamit ng logical reasoning and mathematical system sa pag-conclude ng isang statement gamit lamang yung ating knowledge on mathematics. So dito naman meron tayong nakikitang dalawang line segments at ang tanong dito or ang statement dito, these segments have equal lengths. So, masasabi ba natin na totoo yung ating true or false yung ating statement na ito? So, tulad nung nangyari kanina, makikita natin na para namang magkasukat sila, but we don't have any tool to prove it. So, right now, we can say that this is not an equal segments dahil wala naman tayong label at wala naman tayong ginamit na ruler to measure if they are really have an exact length. Pero kung meron tayong label tulad nito, 1 inch and 1 inch for line 1 and line 2, we can easily conclude that this statement is true. So ito ay yes na yes dahil may label yung ating mga linya. Kaya napaka-importante ng label pagdating sa mathematics because yun lang ang pwede nating gamitin paraan para mapatunayan na tama at factual yung statement na meron tayo. So label is important. So sa mga magjo-jowa dyan, so kailangan meron kayong proper labels para may kasiguraduhan yung relationship ninyo. So, kung meron tayo ngayon ditong square, sabi dito, given that the figure can, given that, given this figure, which is, we are seeing a square, masasabi ba nating square, ang square, or quadrilateral, or shape na ito? So, syempre, ang square, specific yan, ang description ng square, dapat alam natin, pero by just looking at this, figure, alam natin na hindi tayo basta-basta pwedeng mag-conclude, mag-assume, at mag-predict na ito nga ay square. Para din lang sa mga bagay na nakikita natin sa paligid natin, hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na porket magkasama isang babae at lalaki, or lalaki at lalaki, or babae at babae, ay mag na sila. We need to really know using facts and labels kung talagang they are a couple or they're just friends. But this one, we know that we really cannot say that this is a square unless meron tayong notations and labels na pwedeng magsabi na tama yung ating assumption or conclusion about this statement. And how will this happen? Sabi nga, we cannot assume that the figure is a square. A square has four right angles and four sides of equal length at wala tayong symbol na nakikita na meron tayong right angles of equal lengths. Kaya wag tayong pala desisyon at wag tayong uh, asomero at asomera na ito ay square unless nakita natin na meron tayong proper labels like this at alam natin na square ang nakikita natin because... This is an agreed upon symbol that this is a right angle and this is also an agreed upon symbol na yan ay mga congruent segments mula dito sa ating linya na nakikita. So ngayon, yung figure number two, we can confidently say that this is a square because of the notations and symbols that we are seeing in this quadrilateral. At yan ang ating lesson on mathematical system at ang ating number bender challenge for today. Given that the figure that you are seeing right now, can you conclude that this is, or the angles in this triangles or triangle have the same measure? At syempre, tulad nga sinabi ko sa inyo, napaka-importante ng mga axioms, postulates, theorems na pwede natin gamitin to argue that our argument is valid. At yan ang lesson natin for today sa geometry sa paggawa ng or paghimay-himay uh, ng mga terminologies na ginagamit natin at naririnig natin at nababasa natin sa mga problems at lessons natin sa geometry at ito ang mga words na hindi dapat natin katakutan basta alam natin yung ibig sabihin ng mga words na yan tulad ng postulates, axioms, theorem, mas madaling nating mauunawaan ang tinatawag nating language of mathematics. This is Dr. E and see you again next time. Bye!